if you haven't noticed. Roberto De Zerbi is one of the most innovative managers the Premier League has ever seen. The way the Italian manager has revolutionized how Brighton plays has inspired great managers like Pep Guardiola, Mikel Arteta, and even Jurgen Klopp. The level of detail put into the Zerbi style is astonishing and will take you through what makes the Seagulls dominate games. And when will other teams find out the perfect counterplay? Brighton's season so far under Roberto De Zerbi has been far from boring. The team sits in 8th place in the Premier League by the time this video is recorded. And they've both scored and conceded in all domestic matches so far. They'll easily secure qualification to the knockout stages in the Europa League, which means valuable prize money for a small club like Brighton. However, it's the way the Zerbi's team plays their football that still makes neutrals admire them. The Seagulls have had an average of 60% possession both home and away in the Premier League so far this season. And that's not a coincidence. Roberto De Zerbi has for years been a positional style manager with an extreme approach in clubs like Sassuolo and Shakhtar. And why do we call his approach extreme? We've seen his players walk slowly or standing with their studs on the ball, waiting for the opponent to press them. He has also had interesting positional choices, like playing without a striker and using two or three players central between the lines. In other words, not something you see in English football every day. Before De Zerbi came to England, his Shakhtar team shocked teams like Real Madrid in the Champions League with the narrow 2-3 build-up structure. With short passes, usage of a third man, they lured out opponents to press them, only to create favorable one-against-one -one situations on the wings. This tactic did put players like Mikhailo Mudrik in situations where he could use his extreme pace and dribbling skills. Just look at those distances and how patient the Zerbi's team passed the ball to move opponents before exploding with pace and with three to four players arriving in the box for crossings. Against other defensive structures, like 5-3-2 in this example, the fullbacks stayed a little bit wider making it possible for the number 10s to drop down and combine with the holding midfielder, who became the third man. Also, this adjustment forced the midfield trio of the opposition to stay narrow making the fullbacks better options when they are the free player. You could say that the way the Zerbi's team attacked against this defensive structure makes it almost impossible to defend, especially when using third-man combinations so effectively. With the holding midfielder dictating the play as Shakhtar did, it's tempting to mark him tightly. The problem with this approach, however, is that the passing lane between the center backs and the striker or number 10s, which is left open. Also, the holding midfielder can just move his marker away from the most dangerous area and open new passing lanes. De Zerbi took the same principles into the Premier League when he got hired at Brighton. Even though the build-up structure differed a bit, the style remained the same. In De Zerbi's first match away at Anfield, Brighton lined up in a 3-2-5 against Liverpool's narrow 4-3-3 press. De Zerbi's rare use of short passes to and between the double pivots, Caicedo and McAllister lured the Liverpool's front line to press the back three when in possession. Also, Thiago and Henderson followed up to mark the pivots, giving Brighton this opportunity. Here you see the line from Dunk to Trossard and Gross open up, without Fabinho being able to track them both effectively creating a 2v1 space in front of Liverpool's back four. Also, March and Estupinian pinned the fullbacks so that Fabinho had to cover all that distance by himself. Liverpool couldn't figure out how to press without exposing Brighton's number 10s as the free player. The game ended 3-3, but with more clinical finishing, the Seagulls could have buried the game before halftime. After coaching for a while in England and bringing Brighton into European competitions, the Zerbi has used the 4-2-4 structure the most. Some may call it the 4-box-4, four four, explaining the midfield box with two number 6s and two number 10s. It did look something like this. Traditionally, positional teams did not use two center backs and two holding midfielders at the same time, due to the opponent's possibility to force the play out wide early in the buildup. 
However, the way Brighton lures out the first line of pressure makes the space wide enough for the pivots to receive or combine when the ball is played to them. One of them is usually open to receive, but not free to turn. The other one is usually not open to be played, but free to proceed forward if he receives the ball as a third man. With both number 10s dropping down in the pockets between the opponent's midfield and defense, the threat of runs in behind the last line is up to Brighton's wingers. Under the Zerbi, that is non-negotiable. Here you see that the wingers get more and more responsibility in running behind the opponent's defense after the Zerbi arrived. Players like Mitoma and Sali March have heavily benefited from this approach. March had for years struggled with goal contributions after Brighton's promotion to the Premier League. But under the Zerbi, the winger has finally started to reach his potential, and the stats back it up. Although the wingers are essential for the Zerbi, much of the foundation for their chance creation is made before they even get involved. As already mentioned, the key is to lure out the opposition to press the ball carrier so that the spaces between the lines get bigger. However, the details in what's required to succeed with this tactic depends on all 11 players, if we are to believe Adam Lalana. In an interview with Graham Hunter, which you can check out in the description, he stated, The key is to find the spare man. The way Deserbi works and his ideas, I don't think there's anyone else working like him in football. It can look risky, and if you have one player not in sync, you're playing with fire. If you're not giving the right option when the ball carrier needs you, you're leaving your mate in trouble. We are waiting for pressure. Sometimes we're getting pressed by five or six players, so you need to give the center halves the right option at the right time. Teams have started pressing in other ways, but it's still tempting to jump press the center backs, as Rashford and Fernandez tried in this video. Brighton usually finds the solution to get out. The Seagulls practice these details a lot to make sure they get it right. At first, teams press them constantly. It made most build-up plays look like counterattacks, because Brighton managed to break the pressure with passes and attack 3v3 or 4v4 on half a pitch. In this way, so it depends how you attack. Tell me how you're going to defend me, and after I'm going to tell you how we're going to attack. And is a team like plays so slow, and after they're so quick, like a counterattack. Even though Brighton yet again had to sell a lot of their best players last summer, like Moises Caicedo, Alexis McAllister, and Leandro Trosser before that, the Zerbi continues to develop players at England's south coast. It'll be interesting to see how far he can take them both in the Premier League and in Europe. What do you think of the Zerbi style? Not only did Pep Guardiola and Mikel Arteta copy some of his ideas, he even proved Johan Cruyff himself wrong. Check out why in this video next.